das für euch okay, wenn wir es auf Englisch machen oder braucht ihr eine Übersetzung? Sorry, we don't need a translation, which is good. So, we might cut a little short, Colin already had a really, really, really hard day behind him, so... Uh, so without further ado, let's get right into it, right? I already told them that um, you are the master of the events in the way. Um, so are there any large event chains that make use of parts of a map or require multiple player participation? Yeah, there, there are a couple different uh, answers to that question. First off, uh, there are large events that require more than a couple people to play. You can see the, uh, the Swamp Boss, the Swamp Behemoth that was up here a minute ago, uh, and the Giant Dragon that you can fight in the charm part of the demo. Uh, both of those require a large group of people at its base amount to fight, and then it scales up from there. So the more people who show up to take part in the event, the more stuff there is to do for everybody. Um, also, there are really large event chains that can span entire uh, chunks of a map. Uh, there are some event chains that are, you know, 16, 18, uh, 20 events that fill the whole uh, area, and they all chain together, and they can make a really uh, cool moment for the players to experience in the game. That sounds actually pretty awesome, right? It's pretty sweet, yeah. yeah. Um, I already told them while I was giving the demo that like we're not hiding our bosses. I told them they had a look at like the Shadow Behemoth and at the chart demo they've seen the dragon. So um, what, do we actually just place them in the middle of our persistent world and how does this work together with the events? I mean you can explain it way better than I can. Yeah, so uh, in, a, in a lot of traditional MMOs, including Guild Wars 1, we you usually find the really cool big bosses down at the end of a dungeon or someplace that not everybody who plays the game is going to get to see them. Uh, and we've tried to take a lot of those big bosses and put them out in the middle of the world and use the event system to make those work properly so that everybody can take part in the events, everybody can see the big bosses, and they can scale dynamically so no matter how many people show up to play the event, there's something for all of them to do. Uh, a lot of the bosses will actually show up as part of event chains. The Shadow Behemoth that we had up here a minute ago is actually the end of an event chain, and you play through all the events, and this guy shows up at the end of the chain as kind of the, the culmination of that. So uh, I talked a little bit about character creation as well, and all the questions for your biography, and it, it, it has affected your personal storyline. Um, are there more decisions that we make outside of our bio biography that can change the flow of the personal story? Yeah, so uh, when you create a character in Guild Wars 2, uh, you, you fill out some questions, or you answer some questions in your biography that affect the early personal story that you experience. Uh, later on, as you play through your personal storyline, you're going to make more decisions that cause your personal story to branch and change directions. And there are more questions that you answer that give you completely new personal story chains. Uh, you can pick between, there's a bunch of lesser races in the game, and you can pick which one you want to try to help. So for example, you can say, hey, I, I'm really fond of the Grawl and I want to help out the Grawl. Uh, and there, uh, there's something I think many of you may remember from Guild Wars 1. Uh, you'll get a personal story chain where you get to go out and you get to try to help a Grawl village. Uh, and if you help them, they actually will, many of them will move into your home instance, and you can go back in and they'll change their dialogue based on the things that you've done in the game. I also have here some pretty weird ogres in there. Yeah, yeah, ogres too. That's another race you can help if you want. Um, how, so you mentioned that the um, the call actually changed part of your home instance. So can you elaborate a little bit on all things that you do while playing through the game and the personal story? How does this reflect in your home instance? So uh, as you play through the game, the things that you do on your personal story are constantly reflected within your home instance. Uh, NPCs that you interact with in the game world, uh, if you help them or you save them, they end up moving in your home instance and becoming your neighbors. And you can go talk to them and the things they say to you reflect the things that you've done in the game. So as you progress through your personal story, you can go back and talk to them and they have new dialogues based on the things that you've done. Uh, there are things inside of your home instance that will change based on things you do in your personal story. So for example, uh, if you pick to be a, a member of the commoner class in your character biography, at a certain point, this is a little bit of a spoiler, uh, you, you have to pick between trying to save an orphanage or a hospital that bandits are attacking. And you only have 
have time to save one of them. Whichever one you save is saved, and the one that you don't save becomes destroyed, and it will always remain destroyed in your home instance. You know, you'll come back and there'll be sad orphans living by the side of their destroyed orphanage. So, uh, we, we really want to make emotional choices in your personal storyline that make you really feel like they have meaning in the world, and that it actually is important that you're choosing these things. And your home instance is a great place for us to take advantage of that. Good children. stories of places of there was one that might make a return for Guild Wars 2. So uh, there, there are a lot of things from Guild Wars 1 that you will recognize as you explore through the Guild Wars 2 world. Uh, in the demo that we've presented here today in the Char area, you'll find the ruins of the old Great Northern Wall from Ascalon. Uh, the Serenity Temple is actually right in the middle of the Dragon Brand, uh, and you can find that and see what the dragon has done to it by breathing on the area. See the old uh, clockmark crater, uh, the big crystal, searing crystal that was in the giant crater in Guild Wars 1. Uh, you can find that in the Char area as well. Uh, there's some other things that you'll recognize that are kind of tucked away in the demo. I don't know if you'll get it far enough to see this, but in the, uh, the human map that you get to play, uh, there is uh, the old Temple of the Ages. Uh, is over near where the Shadow Behemoth is, and it's actually fallen over a swamp and you can swim down into it and swim around uh, the old god statues and the ruins of the old temple of the ages. Uh, these are just a few of the many things from Guild Wars 1 that you'll find in the game world. We've tried to really layer a lot of that in there so people who love the first game will find all sorts of cool things that they can explore in the world and discover that remind you of the game that you started with. And for those people who didn't play Guild Wars 1, you know, you, you have all these cool things in the game world with established lore that you can learn about uh, and have a game that has a lot of history behind it. So, as with all the other Q&As, we ask um, our fans on Twitter to give, in, give us some questions. Actually, I have two here. The first one is from uh, Yusa Alohara, and he wants to know if you had to pick a favorite feature in Guild Wars 2. One, just one. Go to and why. Uh, well, my favorite thing about the game is the charm, but that's not really a feature, so uh, I, I would say after the charm, my favorite thing is the dynamic event system. Uh, I absolutely love the way that it brings players together, and you end up just forming sort of these ad hoc groups where you play together for a while, and then you split back out and you go your merry way if you want, and you meet up with other players, and you're constantly just playing together, and you feel like you're part of a community. Um, we've seen a lot of people that end up with, uh, we, we've disabled partying for the demo today, but with the, uh, the party system is up and running, we've seen a lot of our usability testers end up running into each other, playing events together, and they end up forming parties together as a direct result of the events that they've done together. Uh, you feel a real camaraderie with the people around you, and uh, that, that really is cool to me. I think that's what an MMO is all about, and the dynamic event system really makes that happen. And char food. And the char food. Char food. Um, the next one I have is from a uh, good friend, Ravius. Um, it's called the Curve Bowl. Who wants to know um, if we have tested our event system with players which are not as cohesive as, like, say, a real and an employee? So, if we test it with players who never met each other? Well, we're, we're doing that right now, right behind us. But, uh, yeah, I, other than this demo, uh, for the last couple months, we've been bringing in usability testing groups to a read on a daily basis. And they're playing through the game all day long and constantly giving us feedback and helping us make a better game. And we've actually found a lot of things in the event system that, uh, that were problems because of those usability testers. And we ended up changing a lot of things the way the event system works as a direct result of that feedback. So uh, that, that is a huge part of the development process for us. Uh, so something else that we do at ArenaNet that I don't think is very normal in the game industry uh, is we really involve QA in every step of our development process. Team. Many of them sit with the designers and they're constantly testing stuff and they're encouraged to give us feedback and to try to make suggestions to make a better game. And uh, that, that really helps us with the event system too. These, those guys were, were there just testing constantly and giving a lot of feedback to make that better. And just as it is claimed that usability test does not mean we run any close alpha tests or we just have usability tests. <laughs> um, okay, 